as part of my look into genetic engineering of uh, the chili pepper in New Mexico, I was able to talk to Professor Gilles Serralini at the University of Caen in France. His, uh, he's a president of CREGEN, which is the Committee of Research and Information on Genetic Engineering in France. Uh, he's part of the government, uh, or has been part of the government, that's looked at whether GMOs are safe. Uh, and anyway, they got a hold of uh, research results that Monsanto had given as part of uh, getting the okay to sell these products in the market. And instead of letting Monsanto do the analysis, which is usually what's done, uh, his group actually did the analysis of the data, and they found three major GMOs approved for food and feed were found unsafe. Uh, he published the results in the International Journal of Biological Sciences under the heading, A Comparison of the Effects of Three GM Corn Varieties in Mammalian Health. My understanding is that you had to fight just to get the information uh, that Monsanto had about the safety of their of, of their product. Yes, um, a lot. We had to go in court and in appeal court. In fact, Monsanto went in appeal court and lost. Uh, this began first uh, in 2002 when uh, I um, was in the commission, in the French commission, and when I saw the test from Monsanto, first of all, we asked to Monsanto to make at least three month test on rats. Uh, when I speak about test, that means toxicological test. Uh, that means with blood analysis and organ analysis, because they have made some nutrition tests, taking the milk and the weight of the cows, for instance. But this doesn't help uh, to see the chronic toxicity. So we had the first three-month test in 2002-2003, uh, seven years after the first release of GMOs within the world. So that means that the GMOs were released without any uh, toxicological test on mammals or just one month. When we had the first three-month test, we saw that there were a lot of significant effects admitted by Monsanto. So then we attacked the French government in order to release that in the public because as you may know, uh, all the chemical tests for GMOs are not only confidential but made uh, only by the companies that have released that in the environment. Only the companies were doing this kind of test and only the abstracts of them, of these tests, were uh, analyzed by uh, some uh, very, uh, very close number of persons in the government. Uh, yours was the first study to look at uh, generational differences in, in rats, or has that not been done yet? No, no, that has not been done yet. The longest test that has been done is only three months by Monsanto, and that's we, what we have counter-analyzed. Three months three month for adult, young adult rats, so from, uh, age, from the age of two months to the age of five months. It takes about six months to redo all the statistics. So it's very long and time consuming and very expensive. What, what would be ideal when you're looking at a, a bringing a food to, to, to humans to consume? What would be an ideal time period for a, a, a feeding study? Well, that's very simple because we are already doing that for uh, drugs or for uh, medicines, medicinal products. Uh, we are usually giving that during two years to RAS, which is the whole lifespan of the animal. So that uh, indicates a chronic toxicity, that means the entire life period exposure. So it's two years uh, to see the chronic effects on at least one mammal. It could be done on three mammals in order to study carcinogenic effects. So why doesn't somebody just do a long-term study? With, you know, get some GMOs and some rats and do a study. Is that, is that impossible to do? Well, my friend, you have to understand that during the last 50 years, nobody has done that for any drug, any pesticide, any chemical, uh, because it costs about 2 million euros uh, to do this kind of test during two years, just because we all agree that these tests should be done according to the so-called OCDE standards. So that means there are about 8 to 10 people taking care of the rats daily. Uh, they are in uh, special lab suits, uh, everything is closed, 
they are monitoring the animals every day, like if they were in a clinical study, they are taking the blood, uh, they are looking at the organs uh, very often, and uh, it's like you, if you had 1,400 people in clinic and you are checking every day what's going wrong and making all the uh, lab uh, assays uh, of all, they have studied 60 parameters, 60 biochemical parameters. So you imagine that this is very expensive yeah. and that besides the research, besides the experimental research done by researchers on uh, some parameters, some few parameters, nobody uh, in, the, in the world has never redone the test that are done by the industry um, for all chemicals and etc. You may know that um, the eight first companies that are selling drugs are also selling pesticides and also selling GMOs. So they know very well the process and they have done during these 50 years the test themselves and interpreted that themselves and given that to the government but nobody um, even repeats the statistical analysis except us, just because it takes too much time. It is a very big fight around the world. Just because if we impose this test to the GMOs, they are not profitable anymore. It's their end. Even if there is no toxicity, they say that they cannot assess a seed like a drug. Because it's not profitable enough seed by seed. So like, that, mean, that means that if we impose this test to Chile, it is the same cost for them like to put a drug in a pharmacy and it's too much. There are about four seeds around the world that make 60% of the market, of the food market in the world, which are uh, soya, maize, rice and wheat. They have already patents on soya and maize that makes 80% of the GMOs today. If they put their hands on wheat and rice and a couple of other uh, plants like chili, which is important in your country, then they have the right to say who plants what and who sells what around the world. And they will leave uh, Bill Gates at their socks because it's a very big it's a very big profit all over the world to have the patents on food because you need to eat in each country before uh, even communicating or having uh, any uh, army or anything else. Uh, it's, it's even a greater market than drug or than arms because you need to eat and they want to have royalties as soon as somebody eats in the world. But they don't want seed per seed to have that assessed like a drug, otherwise the system doesn't function anymore. So it's a real uh, war, uh, economical war, and you should understand that if we impose right test, it is not profitable. So do you think that uh, um, we know if uh, GMOs are, are, are genetic, GMOs are safe for people to eat, or do we not know that yet? Well, at least we know that they are uh, unsafely tested and that they present signs of toxicity within the very short period they are tested. So that's, that's proved now. Monsanto can say, no, we don't agree because we had all the approvals by uh, committees and etc. But the fact is there that they have admitted there were some, that there were some effects and that they have misinterpreted these effects, saying that they were not uh, um, they were not important, but we say, well, when you have signs of toxicity within the liver and the kidneys, even if they are different in males and females, you cannot dismiss that, you cannot uh, evacuate these problems just because you have decided that. And uh, even with the agreement of some uh, uh, committees that uh, are made in the very secret, by, in a very secret form by the governments because nobody has access to the raw data except the, the, those uh, people, those, uh, uh, these few people that have uh, seen those tests.